Originating back in the 1960s, the CIA's Project Aquiline was a strategic spy drone. It was a propeller-driven craft disguised as a soaring bird, and over five prototypes were developed during the Cold War era. There is still quite a bit of mystery surrounding the drone, but it was speculated that it followed predetermined routes, and it was remotely controlled by nearby teams. There were even plans to outfit it with atomic power, making it to have a flight endurance of 120 days. Once again, this particular aircraft was developed over half a century ago. And it does exemplify the point that some of the most amazing craft are classified. Nevertheless, there are some very impressive publicly known drones. And they are definitely going to change the realm of artificial aerial warfare. So let's begin the countdown. The N-40 is definitely unique. The micro-tactical system can be launched manually or from a standard 40mm grenade launcher. It incorporates our star capabilities, a day and night camera, along with automated tracking. But it can also be controlled with a tablet and a two joystick system. Weighing around 250 grams, it flies up to 40 minutes and then can be used for reconnaissance missions. Now, I don't expect these types of systems to carry weapons or anything like that. Nevertheless, these fast types of deployment drones are becoming more popular. At number 6, the X-58. The Kratos drone is currently undergoing trial runs and can be used for a variety of missions. It features two weapon bays with a capacity up to 550 pounds, and it can fly up to Mach 0.85. It is also highly probable to be competing for the Skyborg program, which is definitely a weird name to say the least, which kind of combines Skynet from Terminator and an autonomous race from Star Trek. Anyways, this will be a race between multiple companies, demonstrating connectivity between multiple aircraft, kind of like one advanced swarm network. The initial intent is to provide human teammates key data to support rapid and informed decisions. And ultimately, this will provide greater awareness and survivability. But personally, I think at one point, we will see warfare which is completely autonomous, and only driven by human intent. Yet another possible contender for this program is the Loyal Wingman, otherwise known as the Boeing Air Power Teaming System, and it will provide a significant advantage for the Royal Australian Air Force. It will have a configurable payload, and this will allow it to perform surveillance, reconnaissance, and all missions. The current prototype is apparently 38 feet long, and it will have a range of around 2,000 nautical miles. Once again, this is kind of intertwined with the Skyborg program, and Boeing expects to mass produce this particular craft in just a few years. At number 4, the S-70. One of Russia's biggest UAV projects is commonly referred to the Hunter B, and it's expected to enter service in just a few years. It is highly speculated to have some designs borrowed from the RQ-170 vehicle, which could have been captured by the Iranians just a few years back, and it incorporates composite materials along with stealth coatings. But it is quite large with a weight of around 20 tons, and a wing span of 65 feet. It is powered by one very large turbofan, which has around 30,000 pounds of force. The drone can carry over 4,000 pounds of munition to a range of around 3,700 miles. It is very likely that the craft will be controlled by a nearby manned craft, but it's still just in a prototype phase for now. Well, the next position is a very large drone with an 80 foot length and a 60 foot wing span. And this particular one is very interesting because it's capable of launching satellites into low Earth orbit. With over a 1,000 pound payload capacity, commercial pricing will start around 4 to 8 million dollars. So it's definitely not affordable to everyone, but we are slowly getting there. Now the Raven X is not completely reusable just yet, but the company plans to change that and it will provide more flexibility to military commanders along with more accessibility to space for commercial operations. At number 2, the RQ-180. Now, this particular UAV has been shrouded in a lot of mystery, and not much technical information has been released publicly as of yet. Nevertheless, it's highly probable that the UAV is one of the most advanced vehicles flying today. It is believed to be roughly the size of the Global Hawk, and have the same capabilities, such as a 24-hour flight time and a 14,000-mile range. Now, the craft should be fully stealth, 
and have the same capabilities as the B-2. So it should be able to perform intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance missions. So if you ever see a flying triangle in the sky, well, it might just be this particular craft. There are quite a few different projects being tackled on by multiple companies right now. And this includes the launch off from DARPA and even the arrow from Kelly Aerospace. But I think one of the most fascinating UAVs being developed as of right now is the SR-72. Based on the development of hypersonic technology and projections from Lockheed Martin, it is highly probable that the first SR-72 is either very close to completion or it might even be flying right now. This particular craft will be the successor to the iconic SR-71 and it's a hypersonic UAV which can go up to Mach 6. Now developing an engine for this type of vehicle is very challenging due to the dead zone gap between max turbojet speed at Mach 2.2 and lower scramjet speed at Mach 4. But the company has hinted several times that they have made breakthroughs in developing a proper hybrid engine. Now the HTV-2 project did provide some valuable data on this type of flying, but a fully reusable hypersonic UAV would be groundbreaking. And it's going to be really exciting to see if this craft really lives up to its name. So just like the Aquiline project, which I mentioned at the beginning of the video, some of the most amazing aircraft are probably classified. Nevertheless, some very amazing vehicles will be revealed to the public in the very near future. So once again, thanks for watching. Please like the video if you enjoyed it and also make sure to subscribe to my channel.